Welcome back, everyone, to final round coverage of the BJ Tour. This week, we are at Pelican Hill Golf Club, and you can see the leaderboard here. Golf Quest is only two shots off the lead heading into this final round. For those of you who are uh, keen observers, you may have noticed that this is week four and not week three. More on that in a moment. Here is how we got to the first round score of even par, a 71 in round one with three birdies, bringing our birdie total to 16. So as we hit the first tee shot here in the final round, just a little reminder that my handicap is currently at one. So when you see the score, it's going to say minus one because I was even par. And then when you add on my handicap, uh, it will take me down to minus one. So I'm starting the day at one under par. And you'll notice that's a terrible tee shot, actually. I don't know what was going on, but my ball speeds, especially at the beginning of this round, were way down. 131 is quite a bit below where I am. Normally, I don't have the greatest ball speed to begin with, but 131 is pretty abysmal. And then there's my uh, right on cue. There's my pull to the right. All right, as these shots play out, I'm going to get into what happened in round three. It was a real travesty, actually, and a bit of a heartbreaker, but I'm over it now so I can talk about it. So week three was being played at the Sanctuary Golf Club, which I actually love. It's probably one of my favorite rounds of the year on the tour. Love playing that course. It's really gettable. And I always find that I can make lots of birdies on it. And sure enough, just right on cue, I came out of the gate. I birdied number one. I may have birdied two or three, can't remember. But very quickly, I got the four under on the front nine. Dropped one shot early on the back nine. And so I was three under par, and that's not even including my handicap. So really, I would have been four under on the scoreboard at that point. And I arrived at hole 14, and that is where kind of this thing all fell apart. Hole 14 is a short par three, tricky over water. I'm going to put up the visual of it in a moment just after this hole finishes up. Now, check out this chip. I actually thought I hit a pretty good one here, and look at this. I actually didn't speed up the video just so we could relive the agony of watching this ball just trickle away slowly. It's really hard to see the depth of these greens and the undulations on the iPad in particular. I think if you run this on PC, you can see this a little bit better, but have a hard time. And so if you forget of the little intricacies of the greens on this course, this can happen. I, you know, it's chipping from, I think, 27 feet, and now I'm running way past the hole. I'm going to have, like, a 50-foot putt coming back. Really, really disappointing. But at least, and really uphill, too. But at least I was able to snuggle it up here into the friendly zone. Remember, on tour, we have uh, 10-foot gimmies. So let's take a look at the hole now. Hole 14 at Sanctuary is this pretty hole. Uh, and in particular, this is a really tough pin location where the pin is tucked in, really a sucker's pin. I wasn't even trying to go for it. I was just trying to kind of play out to the right side. And I pushed it a little bit and came up a little bit short and I put it in the water. So now I'm thinking about trying to hit a chip in there close to within 10 feet to try to escape with a bogey and still be two under for the tournament with some real gettable holes coming up. Unfortunately, I hit another bad shot and I go into the water again. But this is where things got kind of out of my control. At this point, it tells me, though, even though it's clearly showing that the ball is in the water, it says that I'm on the ground so I can hit it. So I think, well, if it's letting me hit it, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. And I really tried to recreate this uh, to see if I could get this glitch to happen again, and I could not. Unfortunately, I wasn't filming the first time around, so I can't really show you. But when I went to hit it, it essentially acted like the top of the water the surface of the water was like a wall so the ball would hit and ricochet back so i tried hitting again and same thing and it wouldn't give me the option to drop so i really had the choice of to keep hitting and reach the maximum number of shots which is 12 or pick up and take a 12 and move to the next hole now i probably deserved in the end probably a triple bogey on this hole which i could have swallowed and lived with and you know moved on even par and kept on playing but I really didn't think it was fair for me to post a 12 on that hole. So I stopped and I ended up restarting the round without really knowing that you can't do that. I was figuring, well, I didn't deserve this. So I'm just going to, you know, all the good that I had done, I'll erase and I'll just start fresh again. And as soon as I did that, apparently I was disqualified from the tournament and I was not happy about it. Uh, but there was nothing I could do. And so that is what happened in week three. And with that horrific disaster behind us, we will focus on the round at hand. If you haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and then find the like button for this video and give that a click too. That'd be amazing. Thanks so much. Come on now, how great is that animation? You can go ahead and give a like and maybe a subscribe just for that. What do you think?
But in all seriousness, uh, thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed and supports the channel. This week we reached our first little mini milestone and we got to a thousand subscribers. I couldn't have done it without you, so thank you so much for the support again of the channel. It is really appreciated and it's a motivation to keep going. So the debacle of being disqualified on week three was one thing, but the other is still kind of frustration we're having as we still don't have an update for where the league stands overall from week to week. I know they're going over a change for the people who are running the league and they're really trying to automate it so things kind of update immediately and people don't have to manually put scores in every week, but it is taking quite some time. So I have no idea where I stand overall in the FedEx Cup race. I'm really hoping that it gets sorted out. I can bring you some updates. As soon as I have updates, I'll gladly uh, fire them up on the screen to show you where we stand. Uh, but in the meantime, just kind of have to keep playing and, and hope for the best. Really thought I hit a great shot here. In fact, when it first came off, I thought maybe I'd have a shot at an ace, but obviously came up a little bit short. Still giving myself a great look at birdie, but nothing was falling today. So had to settle for another par here. Decent drive here, uh, 137, almost 138 ball speed up the left-hand side. I'm not digging this left spin, but I'm getting typically draw the ball a little bit, but I guess in combating my pull, uh, it's okay. Now here's one I think I got away with. I did pull it to the right. I felt like it, I pulled it maybe more than that. So sometimes I complain about misreads. I think this was a misread in my favor just slightly. Uh, I was surprised it didn't go further to the right. Uh, and then I pull another one. Again, I continue to miss by yanking things to the right, which, by the way, if you're wondering, uh, is that accurate? It's 100% accurate. That's exactly my miss on the golf course, too. I always fight those pulls to the right uh, because I'm a lefty, so it goes to the right. Oh, I had a good putt here. Can't believe it doesn't fall. Six inches on the lip. Thought I had it, but nope. And moving on to hole number eight. <laughs> Just a really, really bad swing here. 129 ball speed, pulled to the right. I bring that tree into play. Thankfully, it hits the slope and it kind of fires it back down to give me a shot. Now, on the driving range, I had hit a couple five irons in a rush and they were awful. And then this was the one I just pured. It was great. This is probably my best shot of the day, actually. This five iron into this green. And then I get really unlucky, or at least unfortunate here, catches the slope on the green. You can see that's where I, my aiming marker was, slightly left of the hole, just to guard against the pull. And then it catches the slope and just rolls on down the green. Twenty-seven feet for birdie and another great looking putt that I thought maybe had a chance and just goes by a little bit on the left edge. Plus one through nine. Nice drive here. Still ball speed's a little bit down, but at least it's pretty much straight down the middle, which I always like. Setting up um, a decent shot into the green. Still have 183 yards left though, slightly downhill. And then just hitting a seven iron, trying to get it there. And maybe it was a little ambitious, but I did hit a little funny, especially when I hit that left side spin with my seven irons and shorter irons. I know I'm not going to get the distance. And I just try to chip it in close here and to make walk away with the bar. But unfortunately, I roll it by like a moron. And now I've got 11 feet and miss the putt. So it looked like an easy par. I turn into a bogey and now plus two through 10. Good news is that I bounce back with one of my best drives of the day, almost 139 ball speed down the right hand side, just right a little bit of the marker. And this is a short hole, so it's gonna set up a short little shot in, which I've really liked uh, in the simulator, these half shots. So this is just my sand wedge. I'm thinking about a half swing here. And I stick yeah. it in, and then we get a little mic face giving us the nod. Hey, tell us what you think of the mic face when the make a birdie there. Do you like that? Do we need more mic, more variety? Do we need mic and a hat? Do we need less mic? Uh, let us know in the comments below. What do you think of mic face? I, uh, I personally, I'm a big fan, but uh, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, although I don't really understand how you couldn't love it. And I really thought I made back-to-back -back birdies here, right on the edge. Oh. I had a great tee shot, put it in there, and then really thought I made the birdie putt. Now this is interesting. Back-to-back -back par three. This one's just a short little 87 downhill um, par three. So I'm just getting a sand wedge here. And I'm gonna actually end up putting it very close to the distance that I just had. So I just had a 24 foot putt. 
and now I believe I'm going to end up with a 25 foot putt. Now the reason this is interesting is I could tell I did not hit this. I tried to hit it the exact same speed as the last one and I knew it was short. So for those of you who are wondering if you know SkyTrack or these simulators can kind of pick up putting, they really can. In fact, I think my putting control over distance has actually really improved because of the simulator, which I mentioned in another video, but it just blows my mind that it is actually that accurate. I know putting isn't great on these things, but putting control of distance is pretty solid. So two putts very similar and I could totally tell the difference. And that, my friends, if you just saw that, was a horrendous three wood. I don't normally hit the three wood off the deck. I tried there because I thought it was pretty wide open and it was just terrible, but I got away with it. Not a big uh, miss because it was pretty open. And then I put this one in close. And I thought we were gonna get a little bit more mic face there, uh, but unfortunately just out of range, 12 feet for birdie. And ooh, that pup was moving, but it buried into the cut, giving us a little bit more mic face, uh, giving the people what they want. So four holes left to play here. This is hole 15, nice little short par four. And not a great drive, but it'll do. And it's down the middle of the fairway. Um, but again, only 210 yards. It was uphill, but still. And my typical miss, which is a little bit to the right, but not terrible. They weren't as bad today overall, the pulls actually. It did come up short though. That's a nine iron from 134, well short. All right, on to hole 15, par three here. I'm trying to hit an eight iron, 162 yards. It's slightly downhill. Again, maybe a little ambitious. And this time I do pull it slightly and ends up into the bunker. Now in the simulator, these are hard. I mean, in real life, it's hard too, but in the simulator, it's also hard. You have to know how, when you're this far down, you really have to hit it hard to get it over the lip. And it's so hard to kind of flop something up in the simulator, get it high and to make it stop. Um, but. The, if you kind of hit it too light, obviously you're right into the bank. So giving a little extra juice there to get it up, leaving myself a long par look, and this one doesn't fall. Even though it was a good putt, uh, I do drop a shot here. So back to plus one through 16. And this hole makes me cringe just thinking about the outcome. Good drive though, get off to a good start. Um, basically 138 ball speed down the middle of the fairway. Uh, and with some rollout, I get it to close to 250 yards and it was slightly uphill, so that's good for me. And then I take up my three hybrid and I just give it a good whack down there, a good solid strike here, uh, setting in a short distance into the pin. Now here's the dilemma. I'm uphill and I'm in between clubs. I have about 87 yards. And so I try to take a little off the A wedge. Oh, no. oh, gross. oh, it's painful to watch every time, but at least I think I know what I'm doing now. This happened the last time I showed um, a tournament round as well. And here it is an instant replay. And it also happened when I was trying to lay off the A wedge. So when I try to lay off a shot, for some reason, I bring the shank into play. And so I got to figure out why that's happening. I was looking at the replay there. I can't quite figure out why, um, but something's off. I've got to be able to kind of take a little bit off my normal swing and not hit a shank. So I drop a shot there, that was pretty ugly. Moving on to the 18th hole. This is a tricky hole, needs a good tee shot, and then a tricky shot into the green. Now in this flyover, it looks like the pin's on the left. In the tournament, it was down on the right, a much harder location, and I hit one of the worst drives of the day. Like, look how ugly this is. This is just terrible. Off to the side, it goes 196 yards, maybe 197 yards total and I've got a mile left. I hit a really good three hybrid here, but I had no hope of getting there. Like it was just absolutely no hope. It was uphill to fly it even as far as I did. It was good. I right, 53 yards in. Unfortunately, I redeemed myself here with a good sand wedge and I'm able to get it to stay within that friendly zone for the par and I finish my round at plus two. Well, sorry, not the round. I finished the tournament at plus two. I was three over. Uh, for this round I shot a 73 and like I was saying earlier I don't know the results yet I will have to give you an update later on when it's finally updated on the website hopefully that's sooner than later uh, but in the meantime just thanks again for watching it's been uh, a pleasure and if you wouldn't mind if you haven't already hit subscribe hit like 
uh, maybe share this channel with someone. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks so much. And we will see you next time on Golf Quest. <laughs>